Hiya, Darren from ProSpilot here, and today I'm going to show you how to build an iOS switch. So I've got a um, star singing sketch, I've got a basic switch which I've taken out of the iOS UI library, and I've just broken it down into, into its basic basic shapes. We're not going to be using the, we're not actually going to be importing these shapes into Protopie. We're going to be creating them from scratch on this one. So we're just going to be using this as a reference. So let's get started. So I just want to get the size of the switch, which is 51 by 31. So I'm going to skip over and I'm going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to make that 51 wide by 31 high. And we need to give it rounded corners. So it's going to set the, the radius. So if we set the radius the same as the height, so 31 should give us a perfect rounded, rounded shape. So that's the first part. Now we need to just have a look and see. We need the, the circular part of the switch, which is 27 square and it's, it's inset by two pixels. So again, we're gonna get, uh, get an oval this time. And we'll set that, we'll just lock the, the aspect ratio and we'll set that to 27. And we're just gonna bring that in here. Let's just change that color to white. And let's just go and get that gray color, the actual gray color, which is Right, it's at 32% opacity. So what we want to do first, we want to up that to 100. Actually, no, that's fine. Don't need to do that. Let's um, scrub that. Remember it's 32% opacity. We'll set that to 32 on the fill. Okay. And then we'll call that switch background. Just zoom in a little bit here. So we can now group these two together. So just Command G on your keyboard, um, and that will give us a effectively a zero a zero zero origin. So make it a little bit easier to work out the maths. So our switch background is going to be a zero zero, and we want our button to be inset by two. Okay, so that's the basic shapes. We want to, it's got a little bit of a shadow and we can't do complex shadows in ProPi. There's always, uh, there's two, two shadows that's being overlaid here. So we're just gonna approximate this. Um, so we're just going to, so we've got eight blur, and it's offset by three. So let's just add a shadow. We'll make it three and eight. And let's just have a look at the color. Okay, so it's black, it's 15% black. So we've got black already, let's change that to 15. Okay. That's probably good enough. What we could do, we could add a border, even though you can't add multiple shadows I mean you can you could we, what we could do actually is we could duplicate call this shadow two and let's go and find that shadow which is three one and it's at six percent alpha So we've got a button with one with one shadow on it, and we've got this other button, other shape, which is just going to make it the second shadow. 
That's cool. What we probably will do is then group this and just call this button. So we can just move those together. Okay, there we go. Button and switch background. Okay, so we've got a basic shape, we've got a basic switch created. We want to now move it. So let's call this switch. Overall. And let's just zoom out. Okay, so we need to we need to add a tap trigger. So when you tap on the switch, we're going to move it. So if we select the button group first and then add the trigger tap, it will select it by default. And on tap, we're going to move the button. And we're going to move it, which is why I've got this second reference. We're going to move it to 22, next 22. Two, three, two. Okay. Let's just check see if that's working. Okay. So looks good. Obviously, it doesn't move anywhere else because we haven't set it to move back. Now, there's another thing that happens with the iOS switch is when you switch it, the background color changes. So we want to grab this green color. I'm going to add to the background. And this is this is important. This is important where we're building it natively in Protopy because we want to be able to affect the color. And there is a color response, which I'm just going to add here. But this only affects color of native drawn objects. So when you import an object from another drawing tool, such as Sketch, it's going to bring it in as a bitmap, and we can't really affect the color of that. So this is why we're doing it this way. So we're just going to add the hex value. Make that 100. Okay, feel. Okay, so let's try that out. Okay, so now our background color is changing and our button, circular button, is moving. So that's the first state, that's the on state. So we created the on state effectively. We now want to create the off state. So what we're going to do is we need to know when it's off and when it's on. So we're going to use some conditionals to, to track that. So we're going to add a condition and we're going to call this condition off. And we're going to move our two responses into it. And we're going to check we're going, to, we're going to use the position of the, the circular button to define whether it's on or off. Okay, so our button starts at X2. So if we choose our button here and then we leave it on X and we say if the value of X equals 2, it must be off, right? So, and if it's off, we can then move it to this, this new location. New, new new location and, and changing the color background. So that's the first side of the state. We also want to now duplicate this. So that's this um, command D. I'm going to change this to on. And if you remember, we're moving to X22 is the on state. So we're going to change this to 22. So if the X happens to be 22, we know it's on. And we actually want to move it back to the original position. And our original position is two. So we want to move to two. And then we want to change the color back as well. So we need to just check what are our color. Okay, and remember it's a 32% fill as well. So let's just review. So I'm going to tap the switch. It's going to 
check these the first condition to see if the circular button is at the X position two. And if it is, it's gonna move it to 22 and it's gonna to change to color. If, however, the button's in the on state and by the on state, it's going to check whether the circular button is at X position 22, then it knows it's on and it needs to move it back into the off state. So it's gonna move it to the, the circle, circular button to two and it's gonna change the color back to gray. Okay, so let's see if that works. So on and off. On and off. Cool. So there you go. Um, a really basic intro into using conditions to create two states of a button. Um, this is um, you know kind of a really basic way to to create components. There's in a, in, a, in a future video, I'm going to look at actually creating states using variables um, and that just gives you a little bit more advancement to actually do something with, with the switch. But for now, we're going to leave it at that. So this is a nice little quick one, get you started into creating components. So I hope that was useful and I'll see you next time.